Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. Alias Season 2 Thoughts I am going to start with the finale since it's fresh in my mind. I guess the, yeah, the, the entire finale, everything that Irina does seems like it's genuine. She seems to have legitimately cut ties with Sloan. And we don't know, I suppose it's since he came back, since he came back from the mountain that no one comes back from the same you know, he is certain that he is part of the, the prophecy, and she realizes that so is Sydney. It's not about it's not about Arena, it is about Sydney. And yeah, she's trying to work against Sloan and for Sid. And you know, since we don't know too much about the details of the prophecy at this point in the series, I'm not going to go further into that, but yeah, because until this bit, she was working with uh, with Sloan throughout, I was going to say four, but really it's a partnership. I, I understand why they felt, nece felt it necessary for Irina to basically explain everything, you know, yeah, her overall, what what she's been doing in the, over the course of the season, to Sid, and I understand that they, excuse me, they wanted to do this kind of summing up without just, you know, or, yeah, they, they did this as an alternative to using the, the previously on, you know, that, that tool, and, yeah, I just, I find it's, it comes off a little awkward. I, I think they should have gone with previously on. Maybe just have, you know, I'm, I'm not against the entire scene, per se, it's, it's, if, if she said a lot less, and she basically just briefly come, you know, I never wanted to betray you, and this is how you're gonna fight Sloan, but, but this whole thing, you know, the moment I became walking, I knew I was gonna betray them, and this, it's just, yeah, and, and I, I completely get it, I, some people might have missed or skipped episodes, but they're still like, you know, the finale. I mean, the promos were making the finale look really great. I, I'm just going to watch that. And it's a very complex, complex and complicated show. So yeah, they wanted to make sure that people could keep up and, you know, just have it briefly summed up. I just, I don't think it, you know, you, you can really tell that it's a scene you know, most of what she says there is just to explain it to the audience and to remind the audience of what has happened. And I... I suppose that's what I have for now of the finale. I, I appreciate that things from the season one finale are resolved, which JJ has been known to not do all that much, but they are really easily resolved. You know, a ton of them right there in the, the season opener. You know, Vaughn is found quickly, although he does turn out to have been infected, but then that's also quite quickly resolved. You know, and it, it does make sense that he and not Sydney 
were infected because you know as he was standing there at the the unco oncoming wave she was running away from it so yeah and yeah Irina and Sydney are very quickly gone from the room I I get it JJ is trying to subvert expectations when we see the season one finale we expect there to be like a whole scene there from the you know with with the two of them in that room and then instead you know yeah very quickly and they do at least meet back up before the the episode is over but it's still yeah it's it's very easily resolving these things and yeah sydney wasn't burned you know dixon very quickly accepts the you know that that she really was working for sd6 you know, Jack takes on himself the, you know, no, no, it was my decision, so if, you know, and, and at least they do follow up on, you know, Dixon believing in Sid and this whole thing, you know, later on in the season, around the halfway point, but, yeah, when, when they set it up in the finale, you, you really expect there to be more, but yeah, one thing that is interesting that, that they do actually use is Will with, you know, the, the SD6, you know, he, his life really changes completely from the, yeah, what, what happened, what, you know, the fact that he realized about SD6 and even published, or it was published, you know, he he now has a criminal record, so he can only get minimum wage and, you know, jobs, and he helps out with the, the spy help, you know, and SD6 has not gone public because he, you know, he disavows, as it were, the, the story that he had written. And, yeah, the, you know, having him use the, you know, journalist, his, his expertise directly for the CIA was a pretty good, you know, idea and the, you know, suddenly he and Sid can talk much more openly about her spy stuff and, yeah. And we see Irina kill Kazanol. You know, at first, I wasn't entirely sure if maybe it was because she figured that Sark would be better than Kazanol at carrying on without her. You know, maybe it was in part to prove herself to the CIA the, the same way she shot Sid to prove herself to Kazanol. But it might also be, my ex fiance pointed this out, it might be that she was determined not to kill Sid, and Cass and all might, so killing him means that she walks, so yeah. And Francie opens the restaurant, so we have some stuff with that. I, they didn't do a lot with it, but it's still, it's a lot better than just, you know, going back and forth on whether or not Charlie was cheating, and yeah. Now, Irina is very nicely characterized, you know, very cold, calculating, predatory, you know, and yeah, early on, it's, you know, will this be the one thing that Sid cannot handle? And, you know, the, you know, she'll ask these very personal questions in exchange for information and, you know, gradually her relationship with Sydney does improve and, yeah, and Jack sets Irina up so that, you know, so, so as to not lose Sydney to Irina and, yeah, you know, he's always working to keep Sydney safe and Sometimes, you know, sometimes even from her own decisions. And 
you know, and, and then at that point, you know, and Vaughn realizes because, yeah, it wasn't that, you know, the moment that the, the guy is in custody, I just don't know what Jack was expecting, but yeah, you know, at that point, Sid really trusts her father, so. And the, you know, after, you know, Sloan seemingly poisoned, well, yeah, technically he did poison her, just also used, he gave her the, the antidote first. The, the, you know, and that there is the question, did he do it to, you know, to, to be, a, you know, maybe both. Did he do it to, to ease her into death since it might be more brutal if the Alliance did it? Or did he do it so that he could stay with the Alliance? And yeah. And, you know, seemingly her ghost starts you know, appearing, and it's, you know, it's, it's of course for the benefit of Cain, who, yeah, starts investigating, and, you know, clearly there needs to be something for her to find, you know, it's not, at, at first, before Cain entered the picture, I wasn't sure, because I remembered from my initial viewing that it was Sloane doing it, so wasn't sure why he didn't just claim that this was happening, but yeah, he was under surveillance. You know, we find out about the 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 implant, and yeah, and when Kane investigates it, you know that obviously was going to be investigated with that, and he frames her. So you know that that old classic of you know the person who investigates or who asked for asks for it to be investigated is the one who did it as well and yeah it just that that wraps that up you know the the you know who was could it possibly be Emily's ghost or what what was going on well Kane was doing it so you know to to push Sloan out, and yeah, and that wraps that up nicely. The implant itself and its removal are tremendously convenient with just, yeah, and the, the reveal, I mean, it explains some of the things we had seen before then, but it's again, it's this JJ thing of, you know, I'm going to introduce this thing and then immediately remove it again, yeah. The geisha costume i i really don't think they were being like intentionally disrespectful i think it is a benign kind of ignorance and they're you know they they think that it's an yeah they, they don't realize that it's you know offensive to yeah and you know sydney you know is asked by sark to yeah, to help kill Sloan, and then it turns out that, yeah, Sark did not do that, and now, you know, Sid and Sark both, you know, if one of them burns the other, they get burned right back, so, yeah, and, and then they actually have to work with Sark for a while there, yeah, and I, of course, love the, the spy family two-parter, you know, Spy Girl, Spy Daddy, and Spy Mommy, great, and the all the little moments, you know, the arena changing just completely cavalier, and the, the with, with Jack clearly being affected by that, and, you know, Sid ending their, their fights, you know, stop baiting him, stop being such an easy target. And yeah, the the three of them standing next to each other, gunning down the the you know the the freedom fighters slash terrorists. And of course, fortunately, we get more suit and glasses. And yeah, he apparently was one in five. So yeah, you know, he's in the chair, and they managed to make him even creepier. 
you know, with, with the noise of the chair and him slowly creeping in and then getting very close and yeah, and Marshall too gets to really defy him and he he said he's apparently like, you know, why were you on there? Oh, I was just, it was song, you know, music, see? And then at the end, you know, he made Pong, so it's just, yeah. I I found when when Vaughn and Sydney go to dinner in public, that was such forced tension. It's just why would they take that chance? And and again, then it's very easily resolved because of the whole thing with with Kane. Yeah, is. You know, for for a little while, of this they did, you know, these these intro with, you know, where it's Granny talking super serial, and it's just so much fun because whenever you see, I mean, I really like Rick Runberg, but certainly here, you know, maybe you could argue in in Heroes he got to be more serious, but. You know, in this, it's just he's he's the fun guy. He's the so yeah. It's an interesting choice for it to be. Yeah, it's ridiculously easy, the you know, easily taken down. The the alliance is, and it just yeah the 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 season set has this radio interview with these big fans and they point out to JJ everything I've I've seen for the first season and a half told me that it would you know it could never be that easy and JJ says well it was you know because it was from the inside that it was taken down it's yeah it's just but yeah the the you know there were some there there were some stories that they could only tell with SD6 gone, and he does point out that this way Sloane gets to do more than just be the guy who sits in, yeah, sits, sits and gives briefings and every so, you know, he's he spends almost the entire first season and a half behind a desk, you know, he's he's in the briefing room, he's in his own office. You know, in the, in the first season, he at least got some out of that situation with, you know, the, the box. But in, yeah, in this, once SD6 is taken down, he, you know, he goes out into the field. And he's in all these, yeah, it's it's more interesting to have him more free to be seen in other situations and such. And it's you know they they pointed out that the the stuff they really loved about the show were the the characters and their interpersonal relationships, you know, and it it wasn't really this whole double agent kind of thing. And a lot of viewers found it confusing this whole thing of you know the good the good guys posing as the bad guys and the bad guys posing as the good guys. And you could also you know, it is a bit, it almost seems, it's not a completely realistic show, but it is one of the less realistic things that at no point does, you know, anything particularly happen when, yeah, you know, they, they always think that when they're they're working for you know in season one you see them with this you know arms dealer the arms dealer is actually selling them these weapons you know with Dixon and Sid I don't know did, did they think that it would somehow be you know why why would if they knew that they were being sold weapons why did they think that they were being, you know, I mean, they know that this guy is not, I mean, it's it's pretty clear that this guy is not legit, you know, he's he's clearly 
you know, criminal. And yeah, it, it just, it, I can understand why they did away with it. And I do also think that that's something that this show does well. Lost also tried to every so often change what was the the situation you might see on the show and such. And I think Alias fared a lot better in part because at the end of the day, Sid and Jack are good guys. It's, you know, Sloan is a bad guy. And, you know, there, there are more complex, you know, there, there are shades of gray and such. But at the end of the day, you know, that those stay those stay constant and the it's you you just you see them in different circumstances and different dynamics and so where for the first season and a half it's her as double agent you know her and Jack as double agents for the second half of this season yeah, we, we actually have, you know, I just said slowly, obviously, you know, that might change in one of the next seasons. I'm talking about these first two seasons, yeah, it's, but, but, yeah, then, then they're in a different situation, and Sloan is in a different situation, and it's, yeah, it just, it allows for different things to be, going on and yeah and the I I quite like when overall I'm really not in favor of the whole I I don't think romance is necessarily that interesting I, th I think you have to have something else there, and I don't. I don't think Alias really did that all that well. It's just you know for. Yeah, you know it's well. Isn't he with Alice? Oh, they broke up. Oh, they're back together, and you know does she feel comfortable with another guy after Danny and all this? And it's just, I just don't think it's that interesting. But I will say that, you know, they have great chemistry once they're expressing their love for each other. And it's, you know, near, near the end of the season, you know, as they're working together, you know, I think it's the second to last episode. Yeah, you know, they're, they're going in, they're going to go into the, the server farm. And they're talking about the mission, and Vaughn is standing there in this more comfortable attire, and Sid just shakes the, the champagne and sprays it all over him, and he just stands there, and, you know, some, it's like, yeah, it's like dripping down his, his face, and then, you know, we see her, and she's just got the biggest smile on her face, and the, you know, the, the club with, hey, honey, hi, sweetheart, and the, the yeah, it's just... It's not a job, it's not work for them, it's just fun, you know. They're, they're just, they're enjoying doing this together. It's it's like they're playing or dancing. It's, it's great. And I really like that Vaughn got to show that he has real guts. You know, I mean, we've seen... The, 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 at times he'll, like hide things from her and you know she points out and he'll sometimes condescend and such but that he actually he stands up for himself and the you know the the point about his you know his loyalty you know questioned and all of this stuff it's just yeah it makes him far more interesting and he the character has a tendency to be a bit bland and kind of unimpressive and this is in part to make Sydney look all that you know that much more capable that you know it's why does she even need Vaughn for it okay he'll give her some information but she's the one who goes out and does it and in this one they also let him take more part in action although again sark disarms him 
twice within seconds. It's ridiculous, but yeah, him having being being a little tougher was great to see. And you know, Emily, you know, wore a wire, and she reveals it to Sloan, and just the the betrayal and and you know, in in his face, he's so hurt, but he still you know, takes her with him, and then Dixon, you know, because of the helicopter flying overhead at just that second, you know, he, you know, just slipped slightly, and yeah, he, he missed and, and hit Emily, and it's at this point that I just really want to see you know, some 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 time pass, and then you know he and Sloan has have to switch faces, and just yeah, I, I think that would be an an interesting yeah, and you know Allison slash Francinator is just great, you know the the how she she's smiling and looking sympathetic when others can can see your face but then you know like i i love the the hug the sympathetic hug near the end of the season and then you know face turns france in air and then back when when the hug is ending and just yeah she's she's so good and she's so chilling and creepy and just yeah just completely cold and detached and you know the the climactic awesome fight that they have is just insane they they fight you know the on the commentary track or maybe it's the making of they point out you know it's the safe place it's it's like how in the first season sd6 itself was attacked you know in the box early on it's it's yeah you're you're used to this being where no spy stuff actually happens, you know. And yeah, suddenly, yeah, they're they're fighting, and it is this, you know, normal opt. I mean, it's all of the fights in the show. The the moment that it's hand to hand, you know, yeah, everyday objects that are just on hand in that particular area are used. And here, it's all these. Excuse me. You know, it's it's kitchen knives, and you know they get thrown through tables. Excuse me. And you know, there's the mirror, and yeah, all that, and and this ongoing fight for the gun. I think that was a really good element because the it's very clear that the gun, one of them having a gun and being able to fire at the other is going to end the fight and both of them are determined to end the fight it's not supposed to be you know we're gonna see who falls first no 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 they're they're trying to get the gun and you know Francinator literally does the Terminator thing you know firing you know Sid dives over the 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 counter and Francinator just keeps firing the gun emptying the gun even though she couldn't be hitting it just, yeah and reloads and then, you know, the, the gun gets knocked out of her hand with the, the poker and just, yeah, every, each time this kind of thing happens, it's, you know, then, then there's a little bit more fighting. They, they're trying to, to, to either like maybe tire the other one out or, or sufficiently break their, their body to where they can't fight back, but they, every time they have a real chance of getting the gun where it wouldn't just leave them exposed to the other person they go for the gun and try to shoot the other person and and Francinator's smile there near the end is also fantastic and then at the very end we see that she actually you know lost two years of her life and they they point out in again comes her track making up that when she's talking it's like she hasn't used her voice for a really long time 
you know, and you can tell, you know, Kendall's reaction is like, it's, it's you, I didn't expect to hear from you. And, and, you know, they, Vaughn, you know, they, they brought me back, back from what? And, you know, he, we see the ring and he, he wants to comfort her, but at the same time, he's like, I was certain you were dead, you know, this, this, yeah. And, you know, with the, with, with Francinator exposed to Sid as well, and Will, you know, attacked, it's, it's clear that, you know, they, they, things are not going to be the same way, again, I'm not going to spoil the, the following seasons, but, even without the, the two years she lost, even if we didn't have that, it's clear that her home life will not be the same. I also, just briefly, I love how, you know, she shoots Francinator, and then she, like, collapses, and it's like, you know, she, yeah, she, she fell asleep because it was exhausting, and then she wakes up, and it's just immediately clear, this is not the same place, and gradually, you really, you know, over the seconds, you realize this is this is Hong Kong, and just yeah. But but yeah, the the home life situation is not gonna be the same, and the you you might say it's really from yeah you know the first se the first season and a half was where we really had the home life. You know, even even the first half of season two, with Will having a record and knowing about Sid, we do still have Francie, you know, to, to hide things from and such. And then she gets replaced by Allison. And, you know, around the halfway mark, you know, phase one, begin phase two. And, and that's also where we realize that Sark, you know, he didn't just start working at SD6, he really... You know, he started working with Sloan, for Sloan. With him, it's very much for. And, yeah, you know, but the... And, you know, not long after Sydney graduates. So, we also have... Which also really helps for the, you know... The... You know, if she lost two years and she was still going to try to graduate, that might be... A little more complicated, yeah. But but yeah, so we we lose the 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 home life and the the grad school stuff, and really, I I agree with you know so the show was never quite the same. That's true, but that's also JJ talks about you know the show is always evolving, and. It's also just, did we really get that much interesting stuff from her having a home life? I mean, that was, at first, that was maybe part of what made it different. That, you know, for the, there, are, there are a lot of spy shows. I, I haven't watched very many of them, but it, it did, you know, help with that. But then there's also the double thing, which they also do drop, you know, halfway through this season. I would say they still the the show is still interesting for the the next three seasons. I don't think the the show never stopped being interesting really, and the the fact that every so often it would really change, you know, and you basically every single season has something completely different. In in this one, from start to finish, you have Arena. You know, she's. In near the end of the first season, we realize she's still alive, and then the finale, we see the two meet, and then, you know, I'm grounded. That's priceless. Yeah, she's she's here for this entire season. You know, I think there might be a few episodes where they don't consult her or something, but yeah, she, she doesn't disappear at any point. And yeah, it just... They, they didn't do that much with the, the home life, other than, again, you know, early on, it was kind of fun that she, yeah, you know, double life, treble life kind of thing, that, you know, she works for SD6, well, really, she's working for CIA and doing counter missions for them, but she also has a home life in, you know, grad school 
yeah, this this whole thing. And I do think that this thing of being being recruited out of college was interesting. Although, you know, with Project Christmas, it is less, yeah. Other than that, I think it was, you know, it has some good stuff early on. And I'm really glad that Will and Francie were there so that they could do with them what they did in the in season two. You know, for Will, it's the entire season. For Francie, it's mostly the, the second half of the season. And, you know, and Francinator, she's terrible at covering her tracks. I mean, to be fair, she does sometimes get asked to do some stuff that's going to be super easy to, to trace. You know, the, the satellite footage, for example. And, yeah, you know, leaving all these bugs and then, you know, she has to frame the guy. And it's so clearly a, a frame job. It's just, you know, okay, we well, we don't, it's a dead end. We can't do anything more with it. But, yeah, and she's always bugging people. She's just that kind of person, just, yeah. And the... I suppose... But, but yeah, you know, something that it did add was contrast. You know, sometimes the, you know, in the pilot, he, I you would not believe the day I've had. And this kind of stuff where suddenly it's showing the home life. And, you know, Francie and Will are like watching the, the car chase, not knowing that it's Sid in the car. And these kinds of things. But it, yeah, it, I don't think it needed to be there. I think it would have gotten stale if it had been there for all five seasons. And I think that, you know, this kind of frees her up. Now she can be a full-time spy. Now she doesn't have to hide being a spy except from, you know, the bad guys and just people in her everyday life. But, again, not going to give away what happens in the following seasons, but I think the finale here is a good place to to start from for the the next you know to to really have this i mean for one thing you have this the the two years that she has to figure out and again you know grad school and the home life are gone so it doesn't have to that doesn't have to be part because again the interesting thing about the two years the most interesting thing I would say is what it did to her spy thing. You know, what has has it? Yeah, you know, it. No, nobody likes losing time like that, but for a spy, and in that kind of situation, you know, I mean, there are a lot of crises in these first two seasons. But we lost Sloan. He has. All 47 devices. He even built the machine. That you know, she might not know that by then, but we do, and Jack could certainly tell the others. You know, the yeah, the home life is in shatters. It, you know, right down to the the home being, you know, having broken severely during the fight. And Sloane is still out there with Sark. Arena has stopped working for Sloane, but she's also still out there, and we don't know. What's going to happen, you know, which again, for a while there we knew, you know, we, we, we didn't quite know who she was working for and what exactly her endgame was, but for the first half of the season she was in CIA custody, for the second half she was working for Sloan, but then there at the end she stops working for him. So it all this stuff is up in the air and then losing two years. So it's it's all the time that's been lost, it's trying to catch back up to what what happened with them in the intervening time all this kind of stuff and yeah and the 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 people we really want to see her hide the fact that she's a spy from are the people she's doing missions against you know and that's not it's not always you know the the terrorist cells and such that they fight. Sometimes they do actually walk into a building with, you know, have to deal with legitimate, you know, yeah, people who aren't doing anything wrong. 
though yeah those are the people that we want to see her hide and sneak past and lie to and such that's the more interesting part of the the spy life and it's yeah i haven't watched the the next three seasons since i first watched them i don't know 2000 yeah yeah not too terribly long after the the fifth season ended i don't think but yeah, it's just it's an interesting thing to do to to completely free her up so that episodes can spend all of their time on her being a spy and on what's happening with the others and also yeah, we don't know where is Sloan going to be. Yeah, and what is Arena doing and what has been in the time between. Yeah. And we don't know if if Sid ever told Dixon about Badenweiler, but yeah, she probably shouldn't. It's probably best to not. And yeah, just you know, just seeing how hard it hit accidentally killing Emily. He had no interest in doing that. And Sloane just viciously took revenge on him with Diane, and that's also very compelling him being completely devastated by that and you know it was a good bluff with with the you know oh I get I cut the prime record you know I'm not that desperate would it have killed him to tell at least someone else that he was bluffing it almost killed him that he didn't tell anyone On rewatching these, I honestly found that season one was not as interesting the this second time around. You know, I, I didn't realize that so much time was spent with Sid, for one thing, just not trusting her father, and then also, you know, thinking that he was the KGB, you know, and yeah, they spend some time and effort on that, and then we find out that, oh, it's it was your mother, and then later on, you know, she's still alive. I, it's knowing what would happen. I, I find that the second season is much more satisfying. You know, on on rewatch, it's just it's more complex. The the yeah, it's it's tighter and sharper. So, you know, yeah, a lot can be going on at the same time without a lot of, you know, twisty reveals that then turn out to be something else that where it didn't really lead to anything. I feel like if you if you skipped through a lot of the first season on rewatch, you wouldn't really lose that much. It's just the the once Sydney, you know, when Irina is in their custody and it's about whether or not Sid trusts Irina, that is really compelling. Where it's just, I realized that it was earned that she trusts her father more, and some of some of the time. Then there are also things that makes her trust him less. But yeah, just in the first season seeing it be between them when you know knowing that yeah it's just it's more interesting with her mother because there's there's this whole thing of could you know can Sydney trust her she hasn't had a mother for yeah what was this you know it's been almost 30 years or something so and she does know that she's KGB, that the whole marriage, even having her, was an assignment, you know, it was spy work, but she still, on some level, wants the mother, and Jack is also, he's worried that Irina is going to hurt Sid again, and he's also struggling with, could he trust her again, and, you know, and there are times where he trusts her, and it works out, and then she, you know, I love that 
you know, my, my ex-fiancé pointed out on the, the first viewing that, you know, when she says, thank you for extracting me, that really completely underlines, no, 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 this wasn't like some sudden, she wasn't just like kidnapped by so no, 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 this was an extraction. They were working together, she got, he got her out of, you know, the, the custody, and that's, yeah. But, yeah, it's just, it's so much more interesting, again, even having watched it, because there are things going on there, and just, they couldn't really have done this the first time. It, I, I feel bad saying this about the first season, because it is still great. It's just, I feel like the, and it's, they, they do great. The, the writing and the acting is great. It's just on rewatch. When you know what's coming, it's just less compelling, especially because it's going to get so much more interesting after season one, you know, with Arena. And it's also, there are also going to be really interesting dynamics in the coming seasons. So, yeah. And, yeah, just the... Yeah, I think I've pretty much covered that. And, you know, my, my ex-fiance also pointed out that Irina and Sloane were probably working together from before she, she did the walk-in. You know, from the walk-in to the extraction, they were working together. Because for all that they actually accomplished you know, that that proved that Arena was trustworthy, it just ended up allowing her to take all the, excuse me, all the artifacts, which we find out in the finale that she did, so that Sloane has all of them. You know, any time that it looked like they were, you know, th th there were times where, like, you know, when, when, when Jack actually left a passive transmitter, and, you know, there, there are, things like this where it seemed like you know where, where the the good guys did make a little bit of, of headway but on the whole Sloan didn't really lose anything although he was maybe at times slightly slowed down or frustrated but the yeah you know it they're they're driving circles around the the good guys Sloan and Arena are and yeah it's and and again even watching the whole season, knowing that that is is coming, I was still so. It's it's just yeah these scenes where you have these three family members where there's so much, you know, emotional baggage. There is such, you know, su such trust issues. Yeah, it just it is more compelling than in. The first season on rewatch, I find. I really like, you know, Carrie Bowman and Marshall together. That, you know, the this little romance, and she she has times where she's kind of as you know as awkward as he is, you know, and the yeah, they're just they're adorable together, and it's. You know, I, I know some people can't stand Marshall. I I love him. I think he's, you know, lovably dorkly and awkward and just, yeah, so so much fun. And, yeah, it just, it's, it's so great to see Marshall catch a little bit of a break. And, of course, it is also funny when, you know, it didn't take Kendall, you know, love O'Quinn. It's as much O'Quinn as we can get. The, the better, and just, you know, and apparently, like, in the first season, he was supposed to just be in that one episode, they didn't expect to be bringing him back, but then we get him for this, you know, this much time, and he and Jack are great, and, yeah, and, yeah, it doesn't take very long for Kendall to lose patience with Marshall as well, and then there's this one part where he's like, wait, which of you is really my boss right now, and then we get, you know, hurry up Marshall, get to the point Marshall, in stereo, you know, a lot of fun, and I, th I think he's one of the people you can, you know, he's never really, 
he doesn't usually become pathetic and we're we're laughing you know it's not like we we sympathize with him you know we're not mocking him really we're you know we sympathize with him and you know we cheer him on with the you know he is great at the the tech stuff now you know near the end of the season Arvin Sloan is climbing a mountain. Why is he climbing a mountain? He was in love. And then, you know, we find that that, yeah, you know, it, it needed to happen, says, you know, David Carradine reprising his role in Kung Fu, I guess. And, yeah, the, the you know, the, now that his wife has died and he's back, he can get more information and then he becomes even more, you know, it... it he temporarily lost the the will to engage with Rimbaldi any further, and then he becomes far more, you know, yeah, it's it's more fanatical about it, and you know, near the the you know in in the finale also Jack is like you know you know I pity you the the you know you're abandoned and this whole thing and. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, and that's all Sloan has. You know, it's the only real, yeah. Now, you know, when, at first, Diane is like totally against that, you know, she, she's saying like, you know, Dixon lied, you know, you lied to me all this time, and, you know, and she sends Sid away, and you know, and and Dixon comes back and helps, and then it's like you know, no, we we made a decision as a family. You know, my Mike's fiance pointed out, you know, did the kids have a vote in that? Me, I'm just wondering, does Dixon and Diane still have three fifths of a vote, and does you know, do the children have even have even less? And yeah. And I quite liked the, you know, we the audience know that Allison is the double from, you know, from the episode Phase 1. Near the, you know, in this, they just know that Ethan Hawke was one, love Ethan Hawke, and love him in this. Yeah, near near the end, yeah, you know, the, the characters just know that, you know, it's super convenient that there's this episode with, you know, oh, by the way, you know how Francie's been doubled, although apparently, originally that was going to be revealed at the end of that episode of, of Double Age, and, and love the the horrible, creepy, the, the just this, this sick, sick, you know, JJ is a sick, sick man, the, the pop goes the weasel, it's just, yeah, and the... Yeah, that, that, you know, suddenly there's an episode that just, just devoted to this Helix thing, and, oh, that explains why Fran how Francie was so perfectly doubled like that. But, yeah, it's... The, 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 the characters then also do know that they're looking for someone who's been, you know, and then they think that Will might be the double, and, you know, the the... You know, they do the, Allison does the, the eye thing to him to make it look like, and she hypnotizes him so he can't remember, and yeah, and, and Dixon goes in and like chokes him and just, yeah, and yeah, I, I thought that was really clever, and then, you know, he escapes, badass getting to shoot some of the guys, you know, in self-defense, but you know, they, they point out on, like, the commentary track, you know, in this season, a lot more people are getting killed, and even Will killed, so, yeah, but, but, yeah, the, the, you know, and, and he escapes, and then, you know, Car shows up, and he's like, oh, thank goodness you, you came, are you okay? I am now, and the is like, no, don't go with her, and, yeah, and, you know, and then again, Allison, she doesn't hide the pill bottle better. She doesn't have the, you know, why would you have it written on the, it's not even in code. It just says, right, you know, the, it says exactly what the drug is. It might as well say the, the person taking this drug has been doubled, you know, is, is a double of someone else. It's just, 
Yeah, and the, I mean, sure she didn't know that Will knew quite that much, but it's still just, yeah, and, and she realizes, and then he leaves the message, and, you know, Sid hears it, and she's just sitting there just calmly, and then she's like, so Francie's the double. There's a quick way to find out. Would you like some? And and Francie, there's like a second or two. Sure, and you know, and Sid runs in, gets the gun from under the bed. See, that's how you hide things. Take notes, Allison, and you know, gets the gun. I just remembered, Francie doesn't like coffee ice cream. It's fantastic. And then yeah, and you know, she th you know. Frenzy hasn't put Sid in the corner. She she doesn't have her cornered, so it's yeah. And I suppose that pretty much covers the Yeah, I, I like that they they did tie that in with, you know, so Alison Doran was a you know, one of the Project Christmas kids, so hence why they you know, they they had you know she was the asset. They they had someone. They had an adult, you know, African American female. You know who's ready to be activated. So okay, get the the you know activator. Get the the DNA switch. You know, and that's deliciously sci-fi. How how could you do that without like scarring? Oh, don't worry, the DNA. Of the person who's been he who's being helixed is transformed using this technique. That yeah, love how completely mind blowing that is. That I I don't think we're quite there yet, but yeah okay. The the yeah the you know because Will helped the you know find who was you know, who had been, you know, lists of names of who had been, who had the, the, yeah, that, that done to them, and, yeah, you know, Will, and he hasn't quite thought, he, he realizes, you know, yeah, he only realizes once he's back with, with Francie, and, yeah, he, he hasn't quite realized that it's Francie who Alison Dorn has been doubled by, and, then he finds, you know, the the pills, and he leaves the message. And at the same time, Francie, you know, Allison, she's checking up on him as usual. So yeah, he, she she opens the, the folder that he was working on, and there's a picture of her as a yeah. That's gotta kind of be annoying as well. That it's like, oh right, I used to look like that. And Sark says maybe there's a chance that I can be reversed and look like that again. That that doesn't exactly help when she, maybe that you know before she was just gonna like shoot him in the head or something. No no now she's gonna strangle him just to get him back for for reminding you know her of, of that. Now I think that is But you know the the Sloan, you know, with with the alliance and the you know the man has made himself a lot of enemies and it's like you know he's he's always just you know go, going out ma making other people seem small, ma which makes him the the smallest of all. All right, that's that's actually Trump. I I am quite. Excited to see who next he will declare war on. He has offended basically every minority, short of maybe his the that thing that he refers to as his hair. Yes, that covers what I wanted to say about the season. I dismiss your pain, cause I don't want to deal with it. I've read other parts of this franchise, the links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.